After a human boy ends up on an island full of monsters, two ogre friends are forced to take care of the boy and take him back to his village, even though humans and monsters have been at war for thousands of years. Today we're going to recap the story of the movie, Friends, Naki on the Monster Island, from 2011. In a lake surrounded by rocks, a boy called Takeichi sails his boat into a cave. Despite the threatening appearance of the entrance, the boy goes ahead and is pulled in by the force of the current. Fortunately, he manages to keep the boat steady and crosses to the other side of the cave, which leads to the legendary monster island. After sailing to the shore, the boy celebrates having found the place, but his joy is interrupted by his younger brother, Kodake. The boy has been hidden on the boat and Takeichi has no choice but to take it with him on his mission. The two enter the island's forest and in the middle of it, they find the legendary giant mushrooms. With them, Takeichi will be able to make good money in the village of Middle Rock and buy his mother medicine. He collects as many mushrooms as he can carry, but his brother Kotake senses that something is wrong in the forest. His suspicions come true when the two brothers spot two monsters watching them in the bushes. Immediately, Takeichi carries Kotake and runs as fast as he can away from there, but when he reaches the beach, one of the blue-skinned monsters blocks his way. Even so, the boy manages to escape, heading for his boat and launching himself into the open sea. The second monster, colored red, appears soon after and invokes a magic that makes him jump through the water. With just one leap, he reaches Takeichi's boat, but the boy swerves at the last second. The problem is that when he looks back at the island, he realizes that his younger brother has been left there. Just then, the red monster leaps out of the water and crashes into Takeichi's boat, tearing it to pieces. The boy tries to swim back to shore to rescue his brother, but is pulled by the sea until he is swept off the island. Shortly afterwards, the red monster, called Naki, complains to his blue friend, the ogre Gunjo, that they have let the boy escape. Furious, he kicks a nearby tree trunk, but to his surprise, behind it is young Kotake. Later, in the village of Middle Rock, the boy's mother is worried because they haven't returned yet. Suddenly, some of the villagers bring Takeichi and reveal that the boy has disobeyed orders and gone to Monster Island. Takeichi explains that he did this to buy medicine and save his mother, but ended up leaving his brother there while he ran away from the monsters. Upon hearing this, his mother despairs and tries to go after her son, but the villagers won't let her, as her health is very poor. Shortly afterwards, the island's old woman appears and says that, for many years, humans and monsters have been at war. Since then, the creatures have taken refuge on the island and so there is little hope that Kotake is still alive. The old woman fears that Takeichi's disobedience will bring war back, so an ancient ritual must be performed to calm the monster's rage. But what no one in Middle Rock knows yet is that the monsters have become intelligent, peaceful beings who fear the presence of humans in their world. Because of this, some of them gather in a library to decide the fate of little Kotake. Naki believes that they should get rid of the boy, but the leader of the monsters decides that the best thing to do is to keep the boy as a prisoner. So he chooses Naki to be the child's caretaker until the humans come to rescue him. The ogre doesn't like the idea at all and refuses, even though the leader of the monsters warns him that if he doesn't, he'll be expelled from the island. Later, the other monsters gather in the forest to decide what to do with Kotake. Most of them are unwilling to take care of the boy, so the group decides that Gunjo will take him to Naki, since he was with the ogre when everything happened. Gunjo accepts and goes to Naki's house, who is not happy to hear that his friend also wants to convince him to stay with the boy. However, the blue ogre says that if they do, the monsters will give him all the mushrooms in the forest in return. Naki reluctantly accepts the mission and Gunjo leaves him with Kotake. However, the monster soon discovers that looking after a child is not easy when Kotake asks him for food. Naki just ignores him, but the boy keeps insisting that he's hungry. Seeing that the monster won't feed him, the boy decides to play a trick and burns the man's pants with a lighted wooden stick. The red ogre lets out a cry of pain so loud that it is heard all over the island. Gunjo runs to help his friend and sees him fighting with Kotake, just as the boy bites Naki's finger. Gunjo tries to calm him down by saying that Kotake is just a child, only for the boy to do the same mischief to the blue ogre and burn his back. Gunjo runs around the island screaming in pain and the sound is heard in the village of Middle Rock, just as the old woman is performing the ritual to calm the monsters. The old woman believes that the monsters are furious with the village, unaware that the screams are coming from two ogres who don't know how to look after a child. Finally, Gunjo pulls himself together and goes back to Naki's house to punish Kotake for the prank. However, while running after him, Kotake stumbles to the ground and starts crying. The two ogres become desperate, until Naki loses patience, picks up the boy and lets out a loud scream. But instead of crying, Kotake finds it very funny. Gunjo also tries to make him laugh and shows off his ability to turn invisible, 
but it doesn't work and the boy starts crying again. Then he decides to eat a piece of the transformation mushroom that Naki keeps at home and transforms into a more monstrous version. Kotake finds this transformation incredible and has fun with the two monsters, until after all the fun, he falls asleep. During the night, while the two ogres talk about the boy, Naki remembers when he was a child too. Unfortunately, it was at that time that he lost his mother in the war between monsters and humans. That day, Gunjo and his mother called Naki to run away, but he refused to leave his mother's body and was hit in the face by an arrow. Gunjo ran to help his friend, but soon afterwards a burning tree fell on his mother and she has never been seen since. After that tragic day, the two orphans became great friends and vowed to protect each other forever. The next day, Naki decides to settle the matter of the lost boy once and for all. He builds a small wooden boat, puts Kotake in it, along with an oar, and throws him into the water so that he can return to his world. However, the boy manages to return to the island and, even though Naki throws him into the sea several times, Kotake always returns. In one of his attempts, the Red Ogre believes he has got rid of the baby for good, but he sneaks back to Naki's house and finds Gunjo. The Blue Ogre seems to be getting more and more fond of the boy and plays a joke, painting his face and his own with ash. When Naki arrives, the pair start making faces with their painted faces and the Red Ogre bursts into laughter. Despite this, Naki is willing to get rid of Kotake, because the trauma of his past has made him hate human beings. So the ogre once again takes the baby to the beach and throws it into the sea with a powerful kick. Afterwards, he returns home and Gunjo asks if the boy has been left safely, as it looks like heavy rain is approaching. Little does he know that Kotake's boat broke down when it crashed into the cave entrance and the boy is alone, unable to return to the village. To make matters worse, a bunch of sea creatures come out of the water and set out to devour the boy. Kotake is in danger, but before it's too late, Naki and Gunjo show up and throw the monsters far away. Kotake thanks Naki with a hug, who can't resist the baby's affection and takes him for a walk around the island with his powerful jumps. When evening comes, the two ogres make a mushroom stew for dinner. Only Gunjo saves the most special of them, the Heavenly Maiden, to eat alone. Naki also wants to eat that mushroom, as they are very rare, but during the discussion, they drop the item in Kotake's direction. The ogres ask the boy to give it back, but he eats it without thinking twice. The pair are devastated to have lost the best mushroom on the island, so the next morning the three of them climb the mountain in search of another. At the top, they find several species of mushroom and Kote eats one of them, the balloon mushroom. Because of this, the baby begins to inflate like a bladder and floats down the mountain. Naki catches it before it flies away and is surprised to see that the boy has managed to catch the heavenly maiden as it floats away. In the end, the baby doesn't eat the mushroom and instead gives it to the ogre, which only helps to strengthen the bonds of friendship between them. Later, Naki and Gunjo prepare dinner, but they notice that Kotake isn't feeling very well. The boy has a strong fever and, in his sleep, starts calling for his mother. Gunjo understands that Kotake is missing his family and this reminds him of a story he was told about a being identical to him in a distant place. Naki says that she may be Gunjo's missing mother, but the blue ogre has never wanted to verify this, as the place is in the human world. The two argue about this, but soon stop talking, as the most important thing now is to look after Kotake. Another day passes and, to Naki's relief, the baby's fever is gone. He then presents him with a wooden spoon that he made himself and gives him some stew for breakfast. After that, the two of them spend the day fishing, playing with the other monsters and exploring the whole island. Naki's affection for Kotake grows more and more and he decides to do the unthinkable, go to the human world and return the boy to his family. At night, the two, together with Gunjo and his friends, arrive at the entrance to the village. There, the little monsters put on a coat and try to pass themselves off as human in front of the Middle Rock guard. However, the monsters are so frightened that they can't maintain their disguise for long and run for their lives. The guard raises the alarm and calls all the warriors to go together and capture the invading monsters. Unfortunately for them, it was all just a distraction so that Naki, Gunjo and Kotake could enter the village safely. Gunjo uses his invisibility to check the location and as soon as he sees the safe passage, he calls his friend and the baby to the village gate. There, Naki tells Kotake that he must return to his people, but the baby wants the ogre to come with him. The monster insists that he can't go with him, but for the first time, the baby calls him by his name and the ogre, unable to hold back his tears, gives him a big hug goodbye. Despite his sadness at having to part with the boy, Naki gives him one last present. He takes from his pocket a mushroom which, when crushed, turns into a shining star. The ogre then throws it into the air and the star explodes, turning into beautiful fireworks. Kotake is impressed and chases after the brilliant fireworks in the sky, 
without realizing that he has ended up right in front of his house, where his mother is waiting anxiously for him. The woman is happy and relieved to see her son and hugs him tightly, promising never to separate from him again. Nearby, Gunjo and Naki watch from hiding and remember how good it was to have a mother. However, it isn't long before Kotake misses his ogre friend and looks for him everywhere. Naki is touched, but knows that the best thing for the baby is to stay with his family, so he leaves the village with Gunjo. The next day, the two ogres are punished for having disobeyed the island's law and gone to the human world. As punishment, the leader of the monsters ties them both up in a rope and leaves them hanging from a large tree, so that they can learn their lesson. Gunjo sees nothing wrong with this punishment and tries to defy the leader, but Naki starts to feel bad because he wanted to go to the toilet first. The blue ogre then pleads for mercy from the leader, but it's too late and Naki does his business there hanging from the rope. After his punishment, the red ogre returns home, where he finds the little spoon he made for Kotake. While he looks at the horizon and misses the boy terribly, on the other side, Kotake does the same, longing to see his friend once again. He even draws a picture of Naki in the sand, but the old woman quickly erases it because she doesn't want to attract the monsters back to the village. In addition, she ordered the soldiers to fortify Middle Rock's defenses and so a huge wooden fence was built to protect the people. Days pass and Gunjo goes to the top of the mountain because he suspects that Naki is there. As he suspected, the Red Ogre is there, picking mushrooms to take to Kotake in the human world. Gunjo scolds him for this, as they both know that humans and monsters can't live together. However, Naki retorts by saying that his friend is a coward and that he should also go to the human world in search of his mother. The two friends get angry with each other and prepare to fight. However, Gunjo gives up at the last moment and lets Naki do as he pleases. The Red Ogre leaves, determined to find Kotake again and give him a mushroom from the Heavenly Maiden. Meanwhile, in the village, three samurai have been summoned by the old woman to exterminate any monster that tries to enter Middle Rock. Unaware of this, Naki sneaks into the entrance and sees the huge fence that has been built around the village. Even so, when he sees Kotake, he calls out to the boy, which makes the guard discover his location and trigger the alarm. Immediately, the three samurai appear to attack the invader. Naki tries to convince them that he hasn't come to do anything bad, he just wants to know if Kotake is all right and to give him a present. Even so, the samurai don't listen and fire arrows at him, hitting Naki's arm and leg. As a result, the ogre drops the mushroom and tries to retrieve it, but is forced to run away to avoid being hit by more arrows. Unfortunately, because of his injuries, Naki is unable to jump and finds himself trapped on the beach. The samurai arrive soon after, but they can't find him and decide to return to the village. Luckily, Gunjo appeared just before them and used his invisibility to protect his friend. The two of them hide in a nearby cave until Naki recovers from his injuries. The night passes and Naki feels better, but when he leaves the cave, he finds Gunjo, furious at what the humans have done. Suddenly, he takes the transformation mushroom from his pocket and instead of eating just a piece, he swallows it whole. This turns Gunjo into a powerful monster and he decides to use this power to punish the villagers. Naki tries to stop him, but Gunjo doesn't care and goes to Middle Rock and destroys the entire protective fence. The villagers despair and run for their lives, leaving only the old woman, who begs for the help of the three samurai. However, on seeing the giant monster, the trio of warriors are scared and flee leaving the villagers to fend for themselves. Finally, Gunjo starts chasing everyone and forces them to flee to the altar where the old woman performed the ritual. With no way out, the villagers just wait for their cruel fate, until suddenly, Naki jumps in to stop his friend. He tries to convince Gunjo to realize how cruel he is being, but the blue ogre doesn't care and throws punches at his friend. Naki manages to defend himself and dodge the attacks, but to his surprise, Kotake steps in to protect the red ogre. However, Gunjo is consumed with hatred and tries to throw the baby away, only for Naki to run towards Kotake and protect him with his body. Naki becomes enraged and sets out to attack his friend, but he is too weak and is easily hit and thrown by the monster. The villagers are amazed to see a monster defending them from danger with all his might. However, Gunjo wants to end the fight once and for all and prepares to deal the final blow to Naki with his huge, razor-sharp claws. Luckily, before he can do this, the mushroom's effect wears off and Gunjo is back to normal. Still, he sets out to attack Naki, but Naki strikes back with a powerful punch that pushes his former friend away. Gunjo gets up, weakened, and leaves for the island, leaving Naki to live with the humans. The blue ogre disappears and the whole village is safe, to the joy of Naki, who faints after this fierce fight. A few days later, the ogre is nursed back to health by Kotake and his family. Finally, he makes a full recovery and is welcomed as a hero by the people of Middle Rock.
While playing with Kotake and the other children, he looks at the horizon and sees the cave to Monster Island. He decides to go there and meets his monster friends, who were waiting for Naki to give him a message. On reading the letter, Naki learns that Gunjo set the whole thing up so that Naki could become a hero and be close to Kotake. He ends the message by saying that he will go in search of his mother and that the two of them will always be great friends. Naki tries to go after his friend, but he is already far away and, with his power of invisibility, Gunjo sets off on a journey to find his mother. Faced with this noble attitude, Naki can't help crying and sheds tears for his departed friend. However, his sadness soon turns to joy when he returns to the beach and meets Kotake, who has come by boat to see him. The ogre then wipes away his tears and hugs the boy, knowing that now humans and monsters can live in peace, thanks to Gunjo's help. So what did you think of this movie? Leave it in the comments below. And if you liked the video, like and subscribe for more movie recaps. See you next time.